A few days ago, we lost 13-year-old Emily Victoria Viegas to this virus. Earlier this month, it was a toddler who hadn't yet turned two. And tragically, they're not the only children who've been taken by COVID-19. As a father, I know there are no words for the parents' grief. To Emily's family from Brampton and to the family in BC, and to all parents who've lost a child and to everyone who's lost a loved one. We are thinking of you. We are grieving with you. And you are not alone. To beat back the third wave and protect Ontarians, we're deploying federal health care workers to the province. This mobilization includes three medical assistance teams and nine critical care nurses from the Canadian Armed Forces. Yesterday, the forces carried out their assessment of the needs on the ground in Ontario to finalize the details of this operation. We're working with our provincial partners on next steps and Armed Forces members will be mobilized in the coming days. Let's be clear, sending men and women in uniform to help in Ontario is a serious step. We're doing this because the situation requires it. Today, the first deployment of nurses and doctors from Newfoundland and Labrador will also be arriving in Ontario for the GTA. They'll land this afternoon at Pearson aboard a Canadian Armed Forces airplane. Newfoundland and Labrador is already organizing a second team of healthcare workers who will rotate in to help. Our government is covering the costs of deploying these teams and we're ready to do the same for any other province or territory that can also step in with support. Unfortunately, Ontario is far from the only place dealing with a spike in cases. Across Nova Scotia, and especially in the Halifax region, numbers have risen quickly and the province requested help. So we're too, there too, we're sending support. We're deploying 60 Canadian Armed Forces members to testing centres in Nova Scotia. This will help stop the spread of the virus. For Albertans, too, we're standing ready. Over the weekend, the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo, which includes Fort McMurray, declared a state of emergency. Yesterday, Minister Haidu talked to Mayor Scott about the, the outbreak in the region and the situation on the ground. Our government has reached out to Alberta on what support they may need to keep people safe and get the situation back under control. The bottom line is this. Across the country, we're working with provinces and territories to keep you, uh, keep you safe. Across the country, we will have your back. And together, we will get through this. And that brings me to vaccines. Because along with public health measures, these doses are key to beating not only the third wave, but the whole pandemic. This week, we'll get almost 2 million doses delivered to Canada. This includes our first shipment of the Janssen vaccine from Johnson & Johnson. Looking ahead, Pfizer alone will deliver 2 million doses a week starting next week and will continue to work hard with manufacturers to deliver a stable and growing supply of doses to provinces and territories as they plan vaccination clinics. When it's your turn, make sure you book an appointment to get your shot. Sophie and I got our first doses of AstraZeneca on Friday. We're feeling great, we're feeling more protected, and we're also feeling like we're part of the solution going I do something I don't often do uh, from this stage. I regularly are talking about uh, our seniors uh, and our young people. Uh, I want to take a moment to talk about my generation. Uh, over the past number of days, we've seen uh, vaccines made available to people 40 years old and up. Uh, and that means Generation X uh, has stepped up and stepped out to get vaccinated. And I want to thank everyone who's been uh, stepping forward and signing up and enthusiastically moving forward. Uh, keep it up. Uh, because of the high uptake, because of everything everyone's doing to get more doses into Canada and into arms, uh, we're now second in the G20 uh, in terms of uh, uh, vaccination doses, uh, and we're going to continue. So thank you for everyone, to everyone, for doing their part. We've all seen the heartbreaking news from hospitals in India that are unable to keep up with the number of patients. 
Earlier today, Minister Garno spoke with his Indian counterpart about how Canada can best help, including through the donation of extra medical supplies. We're also ready to provide $10 million through the Canadian Red Cross to the Indian Red Cross. This will support everything from ambulance services to buying more PPE locally. If you want to donate to the emergency efforts on the ground, go to redcross.ca. I know many Canadians are also concerned about rising cases in Pakistan. Minister Garneau will be speaking to his counterpart from Pakistan later today about the situation and what we can do to help. As a world, we are in this fight together. As we face a she session, a recession that disproportionately affects women, we cannot allow anyone to get left behind. That's why, a week ago, we introduced our progressive feminist plan for recovery. So what does that mean for people's lives? Well, for women entrepreneurs, it means almost $147 million to help with financing, mentorship and training. This is about investing in the kind of entrepreneurs Minister Murray will sit down with today from BC and the Deputy Prime Minister will speak to from the 51 in Alberta. I know Minister Monsef will also be speaking with women-owned businesses from Toronto about what they need to thrive too. Women-led small businesses strengthen communities and are the backbone of our economy. For mothers, this plan means making sure you have good, affordable childcare to balance work and kids. And I know this will come up when Minister Gould speaks to women business owners from Windsor about our plan to reach $10 a day daycare across the country in the next five yes, years. Sir, it's Annie Bergeron Oliver with CTV National News. I just want to follow up on the idea of a vaccine certificate. You just mentioned that the government is considering it, but they're not quite there yet. Based on your own timeline, though, uh, we're only about five months out from having every Canadian adult who wants a vaccine to be able to be fully vaccinated. That timeline you've mentioned is end of September. So if the EU and the US move forward with this idea of having a vaccine certificate, won't those fully, can fully vaccinated Canadians be at a disadvantage? And when that border does reopen, are you anticipating having every single traveller who comes to Canada? Will there be a requirement to make them fully vaccinated? Uh, we are, of course, uh, looking very, very carefully at this issue, um, even as we are in the uh, third wave right now dealing with uh, extremely urgent and difficult situations. Uh, we continue to plan for uh, how we reopen the economy, how we reopen our borders, how we get back to normal, which is something that all Canadians want to do. And obviously, as as was the case pre uh, pre pandemic, uh, Certificates of vaccination are a part of international travel to certain regions and uh, are naturally to be expected when it comes to uh, this pandemic and, and uh, the, the coronavirus. How we actually roll that out in alignment with partners and, uh, and uh, allies around the world uh, is something that we're working on right now to coordinate. I can assure you that our decisions will be based on science uh, and the fact that those decisions are ongoing uh, and those discussions are ongoing right now means that uh, we will be uh, aligned with our partners around the world. It sounds like a yes, it will likely happen. Uh, we are working on it on a scientific basis and we will have more to announce when we have to announce. Right now, we're focused on getting through this pandemic and being prepared to come back, uh, come roaring back once we're through it.